Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 24 career mode and today we're here for the fifth round of our first MotoGP season for the French Grand Prix at Le Mans. Now, if you didn't see the last episode at the Spanish Grand Prix, I do recommend you go check that one out before we do get into this one because it was a pretty interesting episode. Interesting in a way that the events were quite strange. The sprint race, basically everything up to the sprint race was completely normal. Managed to finish second place there. Martin was really on form, but the issues sort of came up in the main race where we had contact on the opening lap. Then I had to do a long lap penalty. That put us to the back of the field. And just like in Austin, the AI sort of reacted to that by riding really slowly for the entire race and never sped up. So that means from this episode onwards, we are no longer using the adaptive AI because it just can't be trusted and it just doesn't allow for realistic races because if you have a bad start, they just ride slow so that you can catch up and then they never... If they then sped up again, it wouldn't be as bad, but they don't. They just they just carry on. So for this episode and all of the ones afterwards, we are going to be using 120% AI. I may tweak that difficulty based on the track. For example, if they're really OP at a certain track, I might turn them down so that I can be somewhat competitive. But from this point onwards, we're no longer using the adaptive AI, so they should be much quicker. But for this episode, definitely using 120. Before I do get any further into the video though, I will just let you know, this is a post-com because I kind of messed up and didn't record my live reactions. The way I recorded it, I recorded on the wrong scene of OBS, so I actually didn't record my, my live voice. So I've had to come back and do it afterwards. And before we do get to the weekend as well, we do actually have the pre-season, not the pre-season, sorry, the mid-season test. And that's obviously all about developing the bike. So I did that. I actually kind of regret the decision I made. Initially, I picked bike two or bike B, whatever it's called. It seemed like it was a bit better. The lap time was better on track. I actually, as soon as I got on it, I felt like the bike was worse, but the lap time was immediately there. So I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll go actually with the lap time because that's obviously ultimately what's important. But after riding it in the race weekend as well, I kind of regret that decision. I think we probably should have stuck with the bike that we currently had. I went chasing more engine power, basically just have a bit more of an advantage. And I know that AI are going to be quicker on the straights now that they've got the, the higher difficulty, but it may very well have backfired on us a little bit. But actually on to the French Grand Prix weekend, of course, we actually have got the objective now to beat Aleish in the next two races in the championship should be pretty feasible because we have like a 60 something point buffer over him so i don't think he could really beat us anyway because the maximum we could pick up is like 74 so he'd have to basically win both races and both sprints and effectively won't have to score anything but it's still something to keep in mind as we head into this weekend but without any further ado we may as well head into the weekend and see how we got on in free practice so for the first time this season we actually weren't able to get straight through into qualifying two off the back of practice Obviously, we've had pretty good pace so far, but this is the first weekend with the 120 AI, and I wasn't able to do it. I wasn't a million miles off the time, to be honest. It's probably only about a second off the top time, but the pack is pretty close. And you can see that's put us about, what, is that 15th, 16th place, something like that? So we were pretty far down the order. Notably, actually, Raul Fernandez managed to get through, and Barry Vinales in this session, and Mark Marquez as well. So a bit of a strange sort of order, because you can see some of the top riders haven't got through. Rins must have got through as well, by the looks of it, on this, uh, on this list here. But it was actually a wet qualifying session here in qualifying one, which meant I struggled quite a lot. So you can see I had a crash there at the museum corner, and that was not the only one of the session. If you guys saw my live GP video a couple of weeks ago at the uh, the Bud International Circuit, where it was a wet race, I really struggled, struggled with the front end, and I found pretty much the same thing here. It wasn't quite as bad, I didn't think, but you can see based on the pace here, 1.8 seconds off the time that Vinales has set at the beginning of the session. A little bit later on, we're going down through La Chapelle, Another crash, but to be fair, that time I think I probably was back in the bike in quite a bit. Because I was obviously pushing, because I wanted to try and get through into Q2, because the AI was strong, but they weren't that strong. I felt like in the race, we would be there. And you can see with two minutes to go in the session, then we're coming up towards the line. We're good, almost six tenths underneath the time. We're actually in last place at the moment, so we go over the line. We move ahead of Luca Marini, but you can see Fabio Quattararo actually comes past us, which kind of gives you... A little bit of an idea of how much we were struggling. But at the end of the session, then, we managed to do a 1 minute 39.0. But that was literally last on the grid, aside from once. So we were just in front of Luca Marini. Now, don't worry, we, don't, we have better pace than that, I think, overall. But just because of the wet weather, we were a little bit off. So I think if we have wet weather sessions or wet weather races in the future, I definitely will knock the AI down 5 or 10% to balance it out. But it doesn't seem like they're quite as overpowered as they have been previously, because only 1.2 seconds, that's not too bad, especially considering that it's a cost that's gone through. So it's a top-level AI. It's not just some random bottom AI, but you can see obviously we have lost the Hondas. Mark Marquez in 8th place actually as well there, I only just noticed that. I only noticed that now, even with the recording, so that's very, very strange. I don't know what's wrong with this AI. This was recorded pre-patched by the way, so I don't know if the 
AI performances have been tweaked in that one. But yeah, it's going to be a long couple of races ahead of us. Obviously, Aleish being through into qualifying two. And Ea Bastianini obviously fighting that we're kind of fighting for the championship. But I think we've pretty much got to give up on that now that we've turned the difficulty up because I feel like we won't be there week in, week out fighting for the wins anymore. But yeah, going to be a tricky sprint and race ahead of us. But without any further ado, we may as well head into the sprint and hope that we can make some forward progress from that lowly position. So down on the grid for the sprint then, and straight away you will notice that Luca Marini actually has a long lap for impeding, which is interesting, because I've not really seen the AI get one of those yet, but it does seem like they can get them. I think it's actually from free practice. I think he held me up in free practice. I think it may very well be from that. Of course, we have gone for the soft, soft tyres, but you can see in the top left-hand corner of the screen, it's predicted to rain during the sprint. Now, not to spoil anything, but that rain does not come. I was actually really excited. This is kind of one of the parts where I'm a bit upset that there was no live commentary because I really was quite excited that the prospect of a, a flag to flag that might cause a little bit of chaos and allow us to climb up the order. But unfortunately, it just, just wasn't the case. It just never ended up coming. It does say that the track is actually 5% wet, but it, I think it is actually completely dry at the start of the race. The Martinator proved himself as the pole man. So Martin on the pole position, then Brad Binder alongside him and Peko Bagnaia rounding out the front row. But the lights are on there. Waiting for the Tugat here for this French sprint race. To hold it for quite a while, as always. Still holding lights out of where we go. Another pretty bad jump off the line too. My tyres are freezing as we go up towards turn one. Obviously, one of those circuits we do that. We passed Marini. He got the jump on us initially. But we got back past him. I think Nakagami's on the outside there. Vinales dropping back from his... Really bad qualifying position. He wasn't qualifying great, but it dropped back even further. Fabio Quartararo on the special France livery uh, Yamaha there on the outside. We get on the inside of Mir. We get on the inside of Vignal as well. A little bit of contact with Mir as we went past him. We passed Fabio Quartararo. We're out of shakedown. Lash Bell. A bit of contact with Sean Zarco. So apologies, guys. A lot of contact in the opening stages of this race. But of course, if you remember what Zarco did to us in the last episode of the sprint, don't feel too bad about it because he absolutely centers at turn one. Up the inside now we go Zark. Up the inside we go Miller as well through Museum. Miller hangs it around the outside. Bit more contact with Miller. Yeah, just rode through Miller there. That's pretty aggressive. And speaking of riding through, Marquez rides through Acosta and allows us to get up to P14. So to be honest, pretty good start. Almost 10 positions made up. I think it's about 7 or 8 positions made up in the first couple of sectors of the lap, which is exactly the kind of start to the race that we needed because down in like 20 second place on the grid was just not good enough. And especially because technically we're still in a title fight. Obviously, we're actually leading the championship still at this point. But I don't think we are going to really be fighting for that throughout the rest of the season. But even still, the points matter. Obviously, we've got that buffer to Alicia Spargo. 61 points. So he could theoretically overthrow us if we don't have a good result. Obviously, at the minute, we're not in a point scoring position in the sprint. So we do need to make a few more positions up. But it does seem like right away, we're much more on the pace that they are. We'll put half a second into Acosta, half a second by Marquez. So kind of halfway between the two of them so far. But compared to the wet weather, we're definitely on it a little bit more in these dry conditions, even though, of course, it is cloudy. And sometimes the AI do have a bit of an advantage for that lack of grip. But last lap one completed then, 37.3 as the opening lap. Not too bad. Already 4.8 seconds behind Jorge Martin, although Banyar actually now takes the lead of the race. Uh, Martin actually takes it back. Have we just put some Trotlamus 1 in there? Yes, we have. Put some Trotlamus 1 in on the outside of the uh, turn 2, I think, technically, isn't it? The chicane. A little bit of a silly one there, but we absolutely didn't gain anything from it. But cutting a little bit later on now to Garage there of lap two as well. So we've actually closed a little bit more back up to Mark Marquez, but on the exit of the corner, just stepping over the curb. A really silly one. I just got greedily on the power super early. We picked up a track limits warning and a well-deserved one of that as well because that is taking, taking the mick a little bit with the track limits, but just so silly. And now cutting on to the start of lap four. You can see Mark Marquez is looking proper, proper aggressive on the back of Augusto Fernandez. And Fernandez is wide, actually, to go through La Chapelle as Marquez wish to make the move on him. He's trying. He's still trying. I think he's through, though. So can we try and take advantage of that one? Because that's the best time to make a place on these AI. We go to the outside of the museum. Obviously, not really trying to go around the outside of him. But he's going defensive. A little bit vulnerable. We try and cut on the inside of the exit. But I don't want to do what I did to Miller. I don't want to, want to ride through him. So he's going to shut the throttle on that occasion. And unfortunately, we weren't able to overtake. And now cutting all the way to the last lap of the sprint. So literally nothing else happened. We were just struggling to stay with that group. We just kind of had the pace. You see, Acosta's still only half a second behind us. So we stayed in a similar position for the entire sprint. But this was the sector of the track where we were really getting the time. So through the game, flicking the bike from left to right. We're all over the back of Augusto Fernandez. Mark Marquez there. Passes Digi Antonio as well. The inside of Augusto Fernandez. Up the inside of Digi Antonio. A little bit of contact with Digi Antonio. In fact, so we've overtaken Digi then up into P12. Didn't mean to do that at all, by the way, guys. I was just trying to pass Augusto Fernandez, but they break so early. There's nothing you could do. Just career into the side of him. But Digi Antonio back around the outside into turn 13. Fair play. What a move from Digi. So he hangs on to that position. He deserves to because it was a bit of a dirty pass that we did on him there. But it's going to be 13th place in the sprint then. So no points in the sprint race here in Le Mans. Jorge Martin then obviously wins that one. 
dominant, really is starting to find his form in this season because obviously he was so fast in Jerez. Pole position here, sprint win as well. Banyaya second place. Bastianini in third place, and Alicia Spargo in fourth place. So really, the two people that we don't need to be doing well, doing pretty well on that one in third and fourth. But fortunately, you don't pick up too many points for a sprint, so we haven't got to worry too much, obviously scrolling down the list to ourselves there in P13. But of course, we have got the main race to go. Easy to get points of that one. We would have picked up a few points with 13th, but we're going to have to have a similarly aggressive start. Obviously starting from 21st place on the grid once again. Now, the thing is, I did start to feel better at the end of that sprint. Obviously, you saw that not a lot happened, really. And then on the last lap, we were able to sort of kind of make two passes, but one of them obviously was accidental on Digi. But the pace was really coming to me at the end of the sprint. I, the tyres started to come to me. The bike was feeling better. So with that logic, we should be able to carry that into the race. And in the second half of the race, we might have a little bit of something for that. AI, but we may as well get into the main race now then and see if we could try and make up some positions again from the back of the grid. So moving down to the grid for the main race then, you can see once again go with the soft softs. Seems to really work at most tracks on this game, especially in these conditions, because obviously the sprint race is cloudy. Looks like it's going to be cloudy again here. No chance of rain this time, although, of course, there was no flag to flag in the sprint, even though the game said there probably would be, which was which was a shame, because like I said, I was quite excited going into that sprint for the, for the potential of that. But we showed that we had pretty good pace in that sprint race, so hopefully we should be able to carry that into this one now. Obviously, the objective's there. Got to finish in front of Alicia in the standings. Quite likely we could do that, but the race objective for the first time is actually looking like it might be quite difficult. So we're going to have to have a pretty decent race to actually do that and be able to get in the top 15, and we'll lose a lot of reputation if we don't do that. And of course, to be honest, we're going to try and beat Ralph Fernandez as well. Jorge Martin heads from pole position. All of the other riders on the grid breathing down his neck. In a few seconds, the lights will go out. So Martin, of course, still on the pole position. Can Martin make it the double here at Le Mans? But here we are with the lights on. Waiting for the cigar here for the French Grand Prix. Lights out and away we go. Again, not a great jump off the line, but I think better th this time than last time because Marini didn't actually pass us up towards turn one. So we've passed Mir again there. We've passed Nakagawa. We've passed Zarka. So we're in front of the Honda Cup. Mark Marquez just in front of us. is 17th. So Marquez is qualifying really bad there. Alex Marquez actually comes across into, uh, I think, our teammate and Maverick Vinales. We get sandwiched between Mir and I think that was Digian Antonio through turn three there. So it's actually, oh, an almost a crash there on La Chapelle. We pick up a track. one. Another almost crash there as well. Going actually down La Chapelle. Jack Miller hung out to draw on the outside. So again, Miller not having the best qualifying. But to be honest, the start was quite good. But we kind of got a bit bullied throughout first year game. We go around the outside of Miller, around the outside of Marco Bezzecchi. That's a risky, risky one. But f somehow we've actually managed to pull it off. So up into P15 already. So a good start up into the points positions, up into our race objective position as we go towards Garage Vare. Bezzecchi tries to go around the outside. A little bit of contact there as he tries to go around the outside of his Garage Vare. But that's just never a pass that's on. And we keep the position there in front of. Bezeki and we're still behind his teammate then Digian Antonio but again a pretty decent start like we had in the sprint and that's exactly the kind of thing that we need to do if we're going to try and score any points here well, obviously we're into the points already in the sprint it was always going to be a tall order because we had to get up into the top nine but on this occasion already put to the points and again I had a little bit more confidence at this point as well so at the start of the sprint a bit nervous because my pace hadn't been amazing it wasn't too bad in the dry I did know that but I knew that obviously I qualified near the back whereas at least in the the sprint, I came through the order a little bit. And we've had a pretty similar start in terms of position gained in the main race as well. And also, Charlie Miss Walling picked up early days, just like we did in the main race. But a pretty bad run there out of the last corner. Is that going to leave us vulnerable to Marco Bezzecchi? No, I don't think it does, because we now cut to lap two. And Brad Binder, who's actually leading the race, by the way, crashes out of the museum. So, similar to what we've seen in uh, in Catalonia in real life there. Brad Binder crushed out the lead, and he's actually out of the race completely as well there. So, actually gives us a free position and moves us up into... P14, but cutting now onto lap three through Garage Vare. Digian Antonio, that's an interesting line. Trying to get the switch back there on Mark Marquez. Just completely cuts the second half of Garage Vare. That's a that's an odd one. I remember that happening at the time. I think it was weird. I knew I had to throw it into the video to show you guys because such a such a strange one there. But down La Chapelle on lap four, then we're actually losing a little bit of contact now with the leaders in front. There's a crash in front. It's Pedro Costa. Pedro goes down. So that moves us up into P13 then, but... Yeah, like I said, it's almost like the guys in front were stretching me a little bit. But with that little crash there, held the lead of the pack up. And you can see on lap four, we are now all over the back of Fabio Digian Antonio. And to be honest, it was really difficult to pass at this circuit. Difficult to keep with AI because I definitely had an advantage through 
Sector 1 and then basically Sector 4, but they were better through Sectors 2 and 3, so it was a little bit of a tug of war. And we're in the such stream then of Fabio Di Antonio up towards Turn 1. We go for the outside. Are we going to try to go around the outside? It's going to be a brave pass. We're going for it. We really are. Into the chicane. Oh, no, not quite on this occasion. He just wants to hang it around the outside. We're a little bit too far back, really. We needed to kind of be ahead of him before we got to the chicane to pull that one off because it's a difficult, difficult pass. And the AI, to be fair, they carry good corner speed. They roll into the corners very well. It's something that they do do quite well in this game. It's pretty frustrating because it's quite difficult to race against that because you level them on the brakes and then they roll off the brakes and just sort of turn on you. But it is definitely a strength of theirs. But you can see we have actually stuck with them pretty well through that sector one. I mean, like I said, I have had the pace over them pretty much all weekend through that section. But out of museum, he just gets out a little bit better. That Ducati has a bit more horsepower and now cuts quite a few laps later to lap seven. So you can see even with that attempt, we weren't able to do it. And Banyaya in front crashed out of third place and he's out the race as well. So another race for Becca Banyaya that he's crashed out of. I'm losing count of how many that is this season, but he's made so many mistakes, so, so many mistakes this year. And really, he should be entitled to attention, but he's just put himself out of it by just crushing it so many times. But cutting now to lap eight. We're in the search stream of Digi Antonio. We're much closer this time. In fact, it looks like we're going for the inside of turn one. This is going to be a brave pass up the inside we go of the Dunlop corner. It's actually turn two. We've got past Digi Antonio this time then. So up into P11. Next up there's Mark Marquez. And then it's Ralph Fernandez, our teammate. So a little bit of motivation. And as I said as well, I was picking up a bit of form at the end of the sprint and we literally just finished seven laps. That was the length of the sprint. And all of a sudden, we're now sort of making passes and moving forward. So it seems like in the second half of the race, I definitely have something a little bit more compared to AI. It seems like that every track, to be honest. I struggle to find myself. I struggle more in the sprints. I struggle to actually get into the race and get the tyres going. But as the race goes on, I think as the fuel load comes down, the bike starts to feel a lot better. But you can see Mark Marquez now is looking pretty desperate to get past Ralph Fernandez. I suppose he probably knows I'm a bit more of a threat than Digian Antonio because... You know, I've passed him before, but not a good run there out of Garage Fair. Is that going to be a track this warning? No, not quite. Digi Antonio gets a run, but shuts the throttle on the straight. So I think we're just going to hang on to that one then. So starting on lap nine, they see Mark Marquez. He's going to do a similar pass to what we did to Digi. I think there he gets to the slipstream. Is he going for it into turn two at the inside of our teammate? Yes, he does. Very aggressive. Bit of contact. Is Raul going to try and hang it there? He tries to hang up the inside of him. But he isn't able to do it. And now, this is where we've got a strike. This is the best place, like I said, in the sprint to pass an AI. It's where they've just been a pass because they're going to be slightly off rhythm. But unfortunately, just very one line through that sector. It's difficult. He defends pretty well there through La Chapelle. Maybe an attack into Museum is a potential. But it looks like we weren't able to do that one as we cut now all the way to out of garage there in the slipstream. But we're still all over the back of him. You can see how much Marquez has put into it. So it looks like Ralph Fernandez at this stage of the race is struggling. And this is a section where they're so weak through the Shimano buff. Look at that. Oh, I just changed direction so much better than him and just get straight on the inside of him through the second part of the Shimano Buff S which again is not something you've been able to say he actually comes back at us though through the next part the blue S but I think we have now got him covered off as I was going to say though it's not something that you see really us changing direction better than the AI except in this game it does seem a little bit more possible than it did in the last few and you know speaking of us sort of picking up the pace as well really looks like we are because we're now hassling Mark Marquez we've got a second already over Ralph Fernandez here on lap 10 about to start lap 11 so it does seem like Basically, second half of the race, we just are motoring along. The bike comes to me, the fuel load comes down, the bike's feeling better. I spoke to other people as well, and they have the same thing in their races. So it does seem like the bikes just get so much better as the race goes on. And we're in the such street of Mark Marquez. Up the inside, similar pass to what we did to, to, that he did to Raul, should I say. And up the inside, we go. Are we going to hang it around the outside of him? Yes, we can, actually, through the chicane. So another position up into P9 now. Big gap in front of us, 3.1 seconds to Alex Marquez. So I don't think we're going to catch that back up because, what, we've got four, three and a bit laps to go. So, yeah, probably not going to be able to do that one. But getting a bit of vengeance there for our teammate, doing the same move that Marquez did to him in reverse. A little bit of contact as well. And there you can see cutting onto the final lap. We actually have caught these guys quite a lot. And believe it or not, that's actually the battle for fourth place with Fabio Quattararo leading it. Fabio, I think, some, hit some sort of troubles and was holding this pack up. That's what allowed me to catch up so much. But a few more laps and we could have got onto the back of them. But at the last corner then, up towards the line, it's going to be ninth place here in the main race in Le Mans. Honestly, from the back of the grid, a pretty decent recovery, I think. So there you go then, that is the final result. So Nea Bastianini actually manages to get the win, which is not what we needed at all since he is our championship rival. Martin doesn't make it the double, ends up in second place, although it's not a close contest at all. He's seven and a half seconds behind. Again, another seven seconds back to Morbidelli, then a few seconds back to Fabio Quattararo, and that was that group that was just in front of me because he was literally 2.6 seconds off of fourth place, which considering where we started and the pace we had throughout that race, I think is pretty phenomenal, and we should be pretty proud of that. And I think with a couple of more laps, we could have been fighting for a 
a top five position there. Alacious Fargo actually ends up in fifth place, so in the end, doesn't gain too many points on us because we actually managed to salvage some decent points there with ninth place. Moving on to the championship standings then, of course, the lead does change as Bastianini moves ahead of us. Now, Alacious actually moves ahead of Banyar, obviously with the crash for Banyar in that one. Acosta moves down a spot as well behind Alex Marquez after he crashed. Binder moves down a few as well. Quattararo moves up a few after what was a phenomenal result on the Yamaha because actually after the test, there was a message on the social media. Uh, Ralph Fernandez was saying something about Yamaha being poor. But actually, ever since the test, Yamaha have seemed to take a step. They've been better because Rins qualified quite well. Quattarara has just raced quite well there. Not sure what happened to Rins in that race. Actually, he was in that pack in front of us as well, wasn't he? So both the Yamahas were actually fighting for a sort of top top five position there, which is fantastic compared to where they've been the rest of the season. They didn't look too bad at Jerez, but again, a bit of a strange race, whereas this one was a bit more normal. Onto the team's championship, though, you can see the Catalanova continue to lead. We still sit in second with Trackhouse, third place for the Factory Aprilia team. Pramac actually moved up to fourth place after a really good result, because Morbidelli was actually on the podium there as well, which is really good for him. And Grassini, obviously, with the two Marquez brothers struggling, drop behind. In the Constructors' Championship as well, no change there. Ducati continuing to lead. 23 points now ahead of Aprilia. Obviously, I whittled that gap down, but I think that's probably just going to grow and grow now that we're not going to be quite as competitive as we were against these 120 AI. I, don't get me wrong, I think at some tracks we're still going to be fighting for the win, but it's not going to be every single week like it was before. KTM still sat in third place, then Yamaha fourth, Honda in fifth, and then just obviously ignore Gas Gas there in last place. That's just bugged because I've now changed the uh, Tech 3 team to use KTMs. Back in the career hub then, you can see we gained a decent amount of RP still that weekend, even though it wasn't great because we actually did get in the top 15 in both, which is ultimately our only objective. It's, it seems a bit weird because obviously we've been doing so well this season, but really that's all the team want from us. So as long as we continue to score points in the main races and finish in the top 15 in the sprints, I think we should be relatively okay. But that was a pretty interesting race weekend there. Obviously, we struggled quite a bit for pace. I think the weekend's pretty different if the qualifying isn't wet. We qualify a lot better. Then we move forward a bit more in the sprint. We perhaps score some points there. And then in the main race, we sort of get maybe up into the top 10 initially on the opening couple of laps. And yes, the pace probably isn't there still at the start. It takes a while to come to me. But I don't get stuck sort of behind Digi Antonio and stuck behind my teammate and stuck behind some of those other riders for quite a while. Because whilst, yes, obviously I was able to pass them in the end, it was so difficult to make the passes. I, I was being definitely held back a little bit. And I think once I had the clean air, you saw that obviously I made inroads on the guys in front. You know, I only need a couple more seconds of race time and I'm in fourth place. Like I said, I was literally 2.6 or 1.6 seconds off of that. So it would have made a massive difference to the weekend if we qualified better. But you know, that's just how these things are. And like I said, I perhaps will turn the AI down if it is wet in the future. But once again, apologies about the fact that this was a post comment and probably a bit of a shorter video because of that, because obviously I just cut to the main points of the races. There's no point just leaving loads of footage of me riding around. And usually obviously I'm making sort of insights or kind of predicting what's going to happen or sort of explaining stuff to you guys. But obviously in a post comment, there's not really much point doing that. So yeah, hopefully uh, it was still enjoyable anyway, but the live cons will be back in the next one. If you are new to the channel, please do like the video and subscribe because it really does help me out. And of course, it is a win-win for both of us as you get some more MotoGP24 game content in your subscription feed. But I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.